I'm not saying that we are making a brand new uh, stuff. What we are doing is basically taking the distributed technology and making databases more reliable. We are not asking people to put their data on our network. Let's be honest, I mean, we see GDPR as not a solution. Hello and welcome back to Altcoin Bus Spotlight with me, Leia Heilpern, the show where we speak to entrepreneurs, innovators and thought leaders in the cryptocurrency and blockchain space. Joining us today is the Managing Director of Cybervane, Jack G. Cybervane Network is the first distributed ledger system, allowing for the decentralized management of data on the blockchain without actually requiring a centralized storage provider. Don't forget, let us know in the comment section below who you want us to interview next. And if you enjoyed the segment, then don't forget to hit the like button. Jack, it's great to have you on the program today. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Now, lots to discuss about Cybervane because Cybervane, in essence, allows information to be traded, transferred, interconnected on a database. So in a modern world, take me through why this is actually necessary because aren't companies doing this already? Yeah, so um, loads of companies are doing this already and uh, I'm not saying that we are making a brand new uh, stuff. What we are doing is basically taking the distributed technology and making a tiny step forward in making databases more reliable, more secure and uh, more private. Because uh, our three products, the PISA database, the DAG storage chain and the Federated Learning Platform, they're ne not new stuff. They're basically companies can use our database just like any other normal databases. It's just that we incorporated the distributed technology uh, uh, and specifically focusing on uh, security and privacy. Let's talk about use cases. What kind of companies and industries actually come to you guys? Um, so that's a good question. Um, we are mo mostly focusing on uh, companies that are data sensitive and probably related to data. And the reason why we say this and the reason why we do this uh, uh, this uh, project is because that we're actually facing a lot of uh, compl uh, compliance issues uh, within uh, within China. Because right now, actually, 2020 has not been a good year, and especially for the big data companies. And 70% uh, of the uh, coders in the, within the big data industry has been ha has lost their jobs because. Uh, uh, of the industry reform because a lot of the companies are actually taking the data from the cash instead of API and selling them for uh, basically for uh, for free and uh, that has disrupted the uh, the industry and uh, I think the the decision makers and the lawmakers are not actually happy about this so there are compliance issues and uh, I'm seeing more and more companies that's in the big data industry are seeing more compliant a solution and we believe that Cybervane database is actually the way to go. And security and privacy is obviously essential um, for a company like yours. So talk to us about the features of PISA, which is obviously Cybervane's distributed um, database. Mm -hmm. So um, the database is no different from any other uh, SQL or non-SQL databases. I mean, th and that's the uh, the nature of it, and that's how we designed it, because we don't want businesses to use our database and have to uh, get into another learning curve. Uh, the only difference is that uh, we have a blockchain. Uh, remember, that's actually different from the DAC uh, storage chain. We have a blockchain that's incorporated into the database where the state of the databases will be recorded on the blockchain, which means that we have created a time machine for the databases to uh, to make the databases more trustworthy. So um, the reason why uh, our database is different is that, um, I mean, post Ethereum projects are mostly focusing on uh, performance improvements where we kind of uh, shifted from uh, focusing on performance improvements such as TPS or, uh, or um, scalability uh, more into uh, security and uh, applications. And uh, what makes us more secure is that uh, the DAG storage chain also acts as a uh, extra layer of uh, storage option and uh, extra layer of security because uh, it sort of uh, mirrors the backup of databases when we have uh, 
uh, roughly 5,000 logs on a database. So two, two layers of security. The databases will have a time machine which records all of the states of the database and then a DAG storage chain that stores and mirrors the databases. So that's what we have on security. But Cyberbane actually uses centralized servers for its primary storage. So does this then sort of, you know, cover that just even though it's centralized? Oh, no, 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 no. It's not centralized at all. And uh, as I said, um, our database, so let, let me clarify that we are not exactly a blockchain project, but rather a big data solution. Um, businesses can use our database just like any other databases, right? You, 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 you can put our database in their server and you just use it like that. The only difference is that the state of the databases will be recorded on the blockchain, which is actually a consortium within the businesses. So let's say uh, a small business which with five servers across departments wants us to use our database. And the databases will, uh, the data will be uh, stored on their server and we're not touching the data at all. And it's just like the way they use any other databases. It's just that the state, the amendment, and the, uh, the actions of the database will be recorded on their consortium, data, uh, a consortium blockchain. You guys also use smart contracts. So firstly, can you take us through how you use them? And secondly, how is it actually beneficial to running your database? Um, our smart contracts are no different from any other smart contracts. It's basically execute the actions uh, uh, by, by, by design. And um, so our smart contracts, the, the way we use our smart contracts is for the exchange of information and also the elections of new nodes to be joining in the uh, consortium. So let's say a different department, a new department wanted to join in the consortium of a business. Uh, they have to be elected or voted with the, uh, by the uh, uh, previous nodes, but everything has pretty much be done by um, uh, autonomously, and ex uh, except uh, if they wanted to have special, uh, I know, election uh, requirements uh, that could be designed as well into the uh, the smart contracts. But otherwise, it works just like any other normal smart contracts. Um, uh, the the reason why it's beneficial is because we, we definitely need something uh, for businesses to uh, to flexibly design their uh, business models and how they want the data exchange to be uh, designed within their businesses. And um, I mean, smart contracts definitely allow them to do that. And you mentioned earlier that you guys use DAG um, as well as or instead of blockchain technology. So can you take us through this? Um, and also explain what DAG is for those that have not actually heard of it. Well, DAG as a directly cyclic graph is basically a uh, a graph technology that's kind of different from blockchain. And uh, it basically goes like this. Uh, blockchain is a change of blocks that goes in uh, one direction. While uh, directly a cyclic graph sort of is more chaotic where we have two units that uh, confirms the previous unit. And uh, it's just more like uh, transactions and uh, confirmations can go at the same time in a, sort of like a tangled web. And the, the reason why we do this is because that they have incredibly fast transaction speed. And uh, we just think that it's more ideal to uh, deal with uh, data exchanges rather than blockchain, because as we've all seen it, when we have a crypto kitty on Ethereum, it just sort of uh, cripples the uh, the uh, the network, yeah. and uh, that won't be ideal for data exchanges. And uh, the re uh, what makes our DAG different from the others is that we are storing uh, data instead of assets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And absolutely, we saw what happened on CryptoKitties. Um. So you can understand, you know, why this is needed. Um. Now I want to look at competitors and other kind of companies out there right now because. IOTA um, are actually running something quite similar. So explain to me, how are you guys different? And do you even see them as competitors at all? Um, we are, we're actually not specific, uh, strictly speaking, uh, competitors, because that, although that we both use DAG, but DAG is not our main focus of the technology. For example, um, if a business were considering to use our database, they don't have to use DAG. I mean, DAG provides a backup sort of like a security, but they can you just simply use their normal day-to-day -day, like backup from, I don't know, Amazon Cloud or anything else. 
Um, but uh, what IOTA is doing with DAG is that they are doing an incredibly fast global transaction network and also working with uh, mostly smart cities and uh, IOTs. That's one of the directions we are going, but um, we are not putting all of our focus on DAG, but instead we are making databases more trustful and uh, making data more interconnected. Okay, so slightly different um, visions, I guess, there. Now, Zymervane will actually earn revenue from the network mm. transactions and all the tokens will then be burnt. So how will the new CVT token actually be introduced into the ecosystem? Okay, the CVT token will be used in terms of uh, data, uh, will be used in data transactions. Uh, for example, let's say if a contributor decided to contribute the extra disk space, uh, for the DAG storage network, then they will be earning CVTs. And all of the transactions uh, made, we will be taking a portion of that and to be burned to support our uh, uh, token growth, because let's, you know, let's be honest, uh, the technology and the market are equally uh, as important. And uh, we're not shy from uh, speaking out for uh, about that. Uh, because we all know the, how the uh, American stocks got up and uh, we ha we can't disappoint our investors either. So uh, we believe that that's, that's definitely a one, one solid way to go. And you have just touched on my next question, but let's just delve a little bit deeper into this. Because until the actual ecosystem becomes functional, how does Cypervane plan to fund its technological development? Um we don't we actually concluded our, tech, our technology development we don't actually need more funds uh, into a development we could have launched our mainnet uh in december 2019 the reason why we didn't do that is because that if we launched our mainnet uh in a bear market uh then it would have been really bad news uh, if our token price didn't go up because let's be honest marketing is as important as technology and uh, we could or we, we could launch our technology anytime because we already have multiple applications and uh, cases in, uh, in, uh, in, in terms of collaborations. So, um, yeah, I, I think we are in the really solid position because in 2020, we are mainly, mainly focusing on uh, adoption and more uh, uh, cases mm -hmm. and more collaboration. So uh, instead of still dwelling on te technology uh, development. Yeah, and speaking of adoption, I think it's quite interesting because with everything you know that we've spoken about, it is extremely technical. So when I was doing a lot of research, I was kind of trying to understand who are the kind of people that actually put their data um, with you guys? Is it people that are already, you know, are they, are they fintechs? Are they already in the space? Or are we talking people that actually don't know anything about, you know, technology that's kind of not their field? Who, who tends to come to you guys? Uh, again, uh, um we are not asking people to put their data on our network, but instead of using our database yeah. as an extra option of all of the databases out there in the market. And the people and the, uh, I mean, the individuals and the businesses actually come to us and mostly big data related that are actually struggling with the uh, compliance. Because uh, le let's be honest, I mean, we see GDPR as not a solution. It's not a solution. It doesn't reconcile the needs of a businesses want to take more data and between the uh, the needs of uh, privacy for individuals it doesn't reconcile that but what we provide is a decentralized ecosystem and on top of that it comes the federated learning which is a distributed machine learning process which actually allows the training process of the art artificial training i mean artificial intelligence model training to be done locally then so which means that the data never leaves the local server so uh the people individuals that come to us mainly you know uh, are concerned about data privacy regulations in their countries uh, for example so we had a really good run uh, in the uh, data exchange collaboration in dubai although we came in second place but that was a a very good uh, technical and information exchange and uh and we had had a several successful cases in China, where in the Zhejiang University Hospital, we provided the databases to them, and as well as the federated learning uh, platform for uh, eye surgeries, which came uh, which came with a really satisfactory result with in terms of accuracy. Um, so yeah, that that's pretty much all of the other uh, applications and the people who are interested in our technology. And in terms of uh, future collaborations, we are 
we were supposed to go for the 2020 uh, Dubai Expo, and we were supposed to be the uh, technology provider in blockchain. Mm. So, uh, but because of the pandemic, we have to postpone that to 2021. But Dubai 2020 Expo would be uh, an amazing showcase for us. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, everything's been on hold right now and it's such a shame, but look, you we've got 2021, so hopefully um, that will be just as fantastic as this year would have been. Um, but you definitely took the words out of my mouth for the next question, so I was going to ask you about any other future collaborations. Is there anything else you want to just throw in there then? Uh, we're still working on a uh, seafood supply chain finance uh, uh, case in China, which uh, basically th th that company uh, accounts for approximately 40% of the other uh, seafood in uh, seafood trading uh, in South China Sea. And um, um, we're, we're, that collaboration is already signed, but we're still working on the technology itself because, the, uh, I mean, uh, we have to come uh, with the compliance and the regulations. Mm. And that's, a, that's a very long process. But we will be, uh, if that if that comes to success, then we will be seeing a huge development in terms of seafood uh, supply chain finance in, in the whole of Asia. So some very interesting um, and exciting use cases coming next for you guys. So Jack, I want to thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure having you on the line to learn more about Cybervane. Likewise, pleasure.